About 100 of them are people from Turkey, and the rest, meaning 200 something people, are from 34 different countries. So I think that um, although the TRNC is not recognized, I think that our university has much more, let's say, visibility and much more acknowledgement in the world. And you know, at the end of the day, what is a recognition of a country? I mean, personally, I would prefer to live in a country, even if it is unrecognized, a country which is fully democratic, where human rights and minority rights are respected, that's enough for me on a personal level. I don't want to live in a country which is recognized, but where you know, rule, you know, the uh, the uh, the law and order is not really um, maintained, or where the state itself is a crooked state. It could be a terrorist state, or it could be a state where human rights are violated. I mean. Which one is more attractive to live in? So I mean, yeah, solution is very important in my life. But meanwhile, the internal governance of the TRNC, even if it is not recognized, call it North Cyprus, call it Northern part of the island, I don't care personally. As long as it is a democratic country where the uh, individual freedoms are respected, human rights are upheld, and there is rule of law, that's enough for me. Then I, it gives me the, um, um, the legitimate ground to look for recognition or you know, normalization or relation with the rest of the world. I have a suggestion because yeah. you say that the good leaders uh, lead the NSA. So I think we may pay more attention on education and knowledge. So we may have more attention on fertilizing the group. Right, right. Thank you. And about the third scenario, you said that it's uh, theoretically possible that Turkey will stop any relationship with European Union. And what about uh, the main trend? I mean, does Turkey aspire to join the European Union? Is there any attempts uh, how, like, to, to reach European standards or requirements? Well, I mean, the current government in Turkey has done a lot of good things. The current government came to power in, I think, November 2002. It has normalized civil military relations in Turkey, which was very problematic. In Turkey, the military used to have the upper hand, similar to what you have now in Egypt, right? What happened uh, about 10 days ago in Egypt? A popularly elected president was removed from power by the military. That was the case in Turkey in 1960, in 1971, and 1980, three times. Now, I think that was a big jump towards democratization in Turkey when the military was, uh, the relations between the military were uh, normalized. Of course, the current government in Turkey, I, I, I'm also very much aware that about a month ago when they would have this Gezi Park protest, the Turkish police used extensive force against civilians, against civilian demonstrators. They have their paper, pepper gas sprays. They, uh, they spray paper, uh, pepper gas on people's faces. They have used um, um, high pressure water against protesters and whatnot. A couple of people were killed. So not a very democratic, let's say, attempt. But comparatively, comparatively, in the last 10 years, a lot of um, reforms were taken in Turkey. I mean, Turkey is much more democratic than 10 years ago. I'm not saying it's a fully fledged democratic country today, but if what was happening on the streets about a month ago 
happened 10 years ago in Turkey, there would have been a military coup later, similar to what happened in Egypt. That's not the case anymore. The ruling government, as well as the, uh, the, uh, the main opposition in Turkey, are very clearly against coups, military coups. So there, there is no support for military coups in, in Turkey. Um, that was an illness in the past when it comes to Spain, for example. Somebody was saying he, he or she was from Spain, 70s, right? So, or Portugal, and, or Greece. I mean, this South European countries are sort of uh, famous with their um, flirtation with the uh, military regime, but uh, definitely um, uh, that's not the case in Turkey. Now, the current government, the AKP government, which is some, some people call it an Islamist government, I don't think that it's an Islamist government. It's a conservative government with some religious colors in their policies. Um, to a certain extent, they might not have adopted fully Western democratic values. But as I said, Turkey is connected with some other architectures within Europe without um, any, let's say, possibility to break. One is security. One is economy. The other one is, in a way, population. I think that today in Germany there are three million Turks and one million Kurds who have most like uh, Turkish citizenship rights. I mean, I mean, part of Turks are already in the uh, I mean, what is the population of Luxembourg and uh, Croatia? What is the population of Croatia? Five million. Huh? Five million. Five million. Five million. I mean, there are five million Turks already in, in the EU, in, in different countries. I mean, if you, if you, if you add up uh, uh, the numbers in Germany, in, uh, let's say, Denmark, in Austria, and uh, several other countries, they are pretty well over 5 million people. Um, but I know that it's a unique case. Um, I am much more hopeful today, especially after seeing the um, Gezi protest in Turkey about a month ago, when people were protesting. They were protesting the authoritarian policies of uh, uh, Prime Minister Erdogan the uh, ruling AKP party, which is good. Majority of the protesters were doing it peacefully, which is very good, which shows the maturity of whatever extent democracy uh, developed in Turkey. And, and believe me, I, I was an undergraduate student in Turkey uh, from 86 to 91. Compare, comparing that Turkey to what we have today is a huge, you know, dramatic uh, change to the better. And the change in the last several years has been even much more dramatic. The current government, uh, 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 for example, I know that this, this answer is taking a long time, but it's a very complicated and unique issue. As I mentioned about 10 days ago, there was a military takeoff in Egypt. The Morsi government, the uh, popularly elected president, was removed by the military. What was the reaction of the United States and EU to that? Anybody knows? They didn't even call the coup a coup. Right? So they were like, somewhere in the middle, they were not really condemning the military. I mean, isn't EU a system which praises democracy and other values related to democracy, human rights and whatnot? And an EU which cannot even condemn the military in Egypt. 
You know the only country which condemned EU directly? Turkey. And among the EU, the only country uh, which was a bit critical was Germany, thank God. But the rest, they were somewhere in the middle. Obama, again, he was in the middle too, because he he's, um, he's interested in the security aspect. He knows that if he pisses off the, um, the military of Egypt, that will be very much, uh, uh, it will very much jeopardize the, um, the security concerns of Israel, which is the United States' biggest ally. So there is that sort of calculation. And when it comes to other countries, like the Gulf countries, like Saudi Arabia, they endorsed and congratulated the military the next day. So, I mean, I ask myself, where would I want myself to be in this equation? I mean, okay, the, um, the president of Egypt, Morsi, who is very much related to the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, not a Democrat, I would say, but nonetheless, he was popularly elected. He might have some, he might have committed some mistakes, but I mean, is a military coup ever legitimate? Can a military coup become democratic military coup? Is the question. Is there any coup which is a democratic coup? All right. So. In the Turkish case, I know that the current government is problematic in Turkey. It has, it has democratized Turkey dramatically in the last several years, but the government itself and its leader, Tayyip Erdogan, is not a democrat. He has a lot of authoritarian tendencies, which looks problematic, of course, which looks like Sometimes you see, ah, this guy is not interested to become a EU member. But if you look at the people, the Turkish people, especially the newer generations, if you make a public opinion poll result, if you make a public opinion poll, you would see that majority would want to become a EU member. And at the end of the day, I think that you know this government might go in a few years' time and some other comes and the policies will, will continue. So um, I look at these things as ebbs and flows. There are ups and downs in this relationship. But personally, I believe that the EU, the European Union, if it wants to be a, an actor in global politics that needs to be taken seriously, it cannot afford losing Turkey because currently it is a uh, it used to be an economic giant it's not a um, it is still an economic giant a couple of teeth lost but it's a military dwarf right so but if you want to be a much more serious actor and wants it's, there is a, a, a terminology called moral power. If you want certain norms and values that you want to uphold, that you want those values to spread, then you need to expand. The only way that you spread those values, democracy, rule of law, and whatnot, is to, to expand and, and be more inclusive. Unfortunately, the EU itself is not doing its job properly. I mean, the last, as I said, the Egyptian case, I think it's a, um, it's a big disappointment that the EU could not come very straight to say that, hey, this military takeover is illegal high politics came in and um, they're not also doing a good job. Any other questions? Yeah. 
after the best presentation, you can see that a uh, large percentage of people, uh, they don't want to, uh, uh, they are not sure that uh, they want to unite. And uh, what are the main reasons of this? Well, very good point. As you rightly put it, um, the first choice of neither Greek Cypriots nor Turkey Cypriots is a federal solution. It's not their first choice. Right. Clearly, Greek Cypriots want to live in a Greek Cypriot island, in a unitary state, which will be ruled by Greek Cypriots, and the Turkey Cypriots majority prefer to have two separate states. Um, but the problem continues. If you want to solve the problem, the only way, as our public opinion poll results show, if you want to put this in a future referendum, the only solution that has a chance to pass from both sides is a federal solution. Nothing else. Um, why is a federation a good alternative in my opinion? Well, because it will be also it will also set a precedent. Forming a federation in Cyprus will become a good example to other parts of the world where there are ethnically torn places. Especially nowadays, or if you go to Middle East nowadays, what is happening in Syria? Syria is going towards division. Is it going to be better for Syria? where you have a one Sunni Syria and one other white Syria. Why should people divide because of their ethnic or religious beliefs? Two of the main reasons are ethnic and religious. Well, I mean, yeah, but you know, I mean, if you look at uh, former Yugoslavia, it was ethnic mostly, you know? But if you look at what is happening today in, uh, in Iraq, for example, it is ethnic slash religious or sectarian. And you have the Kurds, you have the Sunni Arabs, and you have the Shiite Arabs. It is both the ethnic as well as the uh, religious um, divisions. If you look at um, Syria, there is basically religious as well as sectarian. I mean, that's why I, uh, I started my presentation, the date, very obviously from 1648, and then with the nation state concept, because all this is very much related to being part of your own group, being part of the group that you identify yourself, that identification, that identity could be nation, it could be ethnic, it could be religious, it could be sectarian. And I'm saying that, I'm sorry, this is bullshit. Pardon my French. Um, why should we divide and continue dividing, multiply dividing into smaller and smaller groups uh, and not being able to live in one country with all these beautiful colors as I look at it? And if somebody is from a different ethnic group or religion, I mean, to me it's a different color, which is the, the wealth, the richness of that country. I don't look at it as a problem. I mean, why should I care if my friend is a, um, from this ethnic group or that one, or from this religious or that sectarian group? I don't care. But obviously you not know, majority. Uh, think the same way, you know. Yeah, I think that this is this is this is a problem of of our time. You know, it is the same logic. Started with the nation, started with nationalism. They got this um, ethnic nationalism thing. And now it is more religious and sectarian, mixed with ethnic and whatnot. I mean, more than 100 years ago, it was nationalism. 
good multinational empires, right? Austro-Hungarian Empire, Ottoman Empire. What happened to those? Well, nationalism was what touched to those empires. And then they divided. And now those nation states or whatever that came out of these big empires are further dividing. Bosnia. I mean, former Yugoslavia in general, and then Bosnia. Kosovo, I think Kosovo, yeah. um, what is in the north, the, uh, um, what is it, place in the north of Kosovo? Mitrovica. Uh, I mean, further, 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 further divisions. And you will have micro states if this division continues. Is it better? Then you will have <coughs> micro states who won't be self sufficient. Right? Which one is better? I don't know. Any last minute burning question? Do you have anybody? If not, I'll, uh, I'll wish you a, um, a good rest of your stay in Cyprus. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me in the future. Right. My email is my first name dot my last name at emu.edu.cr. Right. So, oh, you take care.